I'm in this space where I really love animals and all beings and it is really hard for me to see this world. I try to be conscious of creating experiences where I don't see a lot of violence. Yet I have very good friends who do eat meat and I want to love them unconditionally and there's a lot of resistance in that. And I want to also understand a bigger question which is what is the purpose of evil and what is the purpose of good and bad? We're going to start with a second because we want to be very clear about this. The only purpose there could be in what you call evil is that in contrast you can identify so good could not exist without your awareness of the opposite of it. In other words, it's that light and dark thing that we were talking about. There is no source of evil. There is only a source of goodness that is allowed or disallowed. It's like the filter our friend was talking about. So there is only a source of well-being. But sometimes people use whatever as their excuse to pinch themselves off from that. Hmm. Now, those are words that we give to you with complete knowing whether you can receive them or not, given the way that you've been thinking about it. But we want you to understand that your inner being is always flowing well-being towards you, whether you are letting it in or not. And it is certainly understandable how, if someone isn't letting it in, that in the absence of something being let in that they want, that they would assume that there's something else that's being projected. But that is never, ever, ever the case. You don't walk around a room and look for a dark switch. There's not a switch that you flip that makes inky darkness come into the room. There is a switch that will resist the light, but there is not a switch that will flood darkness into the room. So the light is the source which can be allowed or not. And it is that way with all this that you are talking about. Now, relative to the animals of your planet, let's pretend that in your very strong belief and your desire for well-being for animals, that you become very influential and you get on lots of platforms and you give lots of speeches from your very heartfelt conviction and you somehow convince the world to build a wall in Mech no different different <laughs> you somehow convince the world to stop eating meat and so everyone is now complying nobody's eating any meat but you're not ever going to get the lion to agree he's going to eat the first thing that runs past him the big one is always going to eat the little one because that's the way it intended coming in not one of those beasts coming in said i hope i can find some humans to shield me from animals or humans eating me in fact the majority of them that you are worried about today would not even have life in their magnificent bodies if it were not for that process that is underway so the thing that is upsetting to you is that you are superimposing your intentions for yourself over the intentions for someone else who has different intentions you see mm -hmm. it is our promise to you that all of you come forth knowing what the real deal is including every animal that comes forth into a physical body and no one comes under duress no one's being forced to come they come for the joy of life they come for the joy of experience of life they come for the co-creative dance and the co-creative game and they come and they come and they come and they come you must be assuming that the death experience is something that ends at all when it isn't it's again and again and again and again and again and so for you to use anything that's happening to anybody else as your excuse to pinch yourself off from your source energy which is the only way that you could ever get the insight to understand it is doing yourself a disservice you see mm -hmm. we know that you're talking about more than just the death experience that you don't want bad experiences for anyone it never feels good to watch anyone uncomfortable for any reason but we want you to understand that there is so much well-being we want you to trust not just in the well-being of yourself if you are to survive in a joyful way in this leading edge time space reality you have to believe in the well-being for all you have to accept that well-being is being offered to all and for lots of different reasons lots of different segments are not allowing the well-being to flow into their experience would that mean that people are different levels of allowing their well-being no it does not mean that 
But we understand how humans would come to that consensus. Because instead of tapping into the energy of source and understanding the joy in all experiences, there is a human comparison. Well, I wouldn't want to live like that. Humans are really good at, after the fact, explaining why things are the way they were. I must have been really bad in the past life for this to have happened to me. And we say it's not about that at all. It is about and only about your connection right here and now with the source within you. And the same is true for the animals. Do you think that any of the animals enjoy the chase? Do you think only the chaser is enjoying the chase? Do you think that the one being chased is not enjoying the chase? It's all about survival. It's all about wanting the continuation of the experience. But there's not the negative emotion in the animal that you are superimposing from your human point of view. There just isn't. Hmm. And for me to project my desires on others. You said, I don't want others to hate me. But you also said, and I don't want to hate them. I don't want to feel bad that they are eating meat. And then you said, and I don't want to feel bad that they are eating meat and that I don't want them to eat meat. And I don't want to feel bad that they feel bad that, in other words, it just goes on and on and on. At some point, you just have to come to the place where you have to hook up with your inner being. Do you really think that you would come forth into this time-space reality without a clear understanding of the advantage that you all offer to one another? It's a harmonious dance, but humans have not yet come to really experience the harmonious dance that you are all capable of and that you all came wanting to experience because instead of spending your time hooking up to source energy so that you can see from broader view and understand those even who are wanting or doing things different than you would want them to, instead you're coming from a place of vulnerability and you're turning that vulnerability to things that you don't like and then as humanity you're squabbling over the disgusting things that you have created from your mood of vulnerability. Are you following us? Having this discussion from a place of vulnerability is far different than having this discussion from a place of alignment with source energy. Do you really believe that that which you want to call God or that which is good, you wanted to talk about good and evil, do you think that that source of goodness would really send you all into this infernal squabbling discomfort of the bigger one eating the little one if there were not enormous desire and joy in the process of the co-creation? None of you came as victims, not one of you. Plant, animal, or human, not one of you came as a pre-assigned victim. Oh yeah, you get to be the eater this time. You were especially good last time. So you'll be the eater and you'll be the eaten. You will not like being the eaten. You will not like it, but you were very bad before. So now you are the eaten. Nothing like that going on. So is this dance then going to be very continuous? and not continuous in the sense of eternal yes yeah yeah because everyone those who ate and those who were eaten all <laughs> re-emerge in the non-physical and are joyful in the motion forward it will always be so and does abraham think that everything that is the way it is is perfect in this sense yes because it is the platform by which brilliant consciousness like you come to even better conclusions of how it could be. And when you come to a better conclusion and you launch that into your vortex mm. and your source energy and all that is source joins in that thought, then it becomes an idea that can be lived later. Mm. But you see, all of that has already happened. You've already lived enough for the joyous life that you all want to live to be there. Hmm. But you've got to find a way as an individual or as a mass consciousness to get into the receptive mode so that you can realize what you've been asking for. It's like you're all praying the prayers for the better life and there they are in the vortex all revealed and ready to be experienced. But instead of being in the vibration of receiving what you're asking for, you're in the horror and trauma of all of the drama of why you asked to begin with. You got to get out of step one. You got to get out of step one. You've got to get yourself into the receiving mode, into the receptive mode, into the allowing the goodness that you've discovered from life to be experienced by you, to be witnessed by those who surround you. Yeah. If it is perfect, 
Perfect and ever changing. If it is already perfect, then when you say it's expanding. Well, that's the problem with the word perfect. It implies mm -hmm. no need for anything more, mm -hmm. and nothing will cease to be. So when we say it's perfect in the sense that it is the perfect environment for the allowance of more, mm -hmm. then more, 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 more. That's the mantra of the universe. That's what we are all about. We are eternal and we know it. And the prize that we are all reaching for is joy. And the non-physical aspect of you has found it and lives it and exudes it and breathes it and speaks it and extends it and projects it and is it. And it's up to you to find some way to hook up with that. But most humans, most humans, you are not alone in this. Most humans are finding something about life that they don't like, that they are using as their excuse to push against and therefore deprive themselves of the alignment that would give them the joy that they're reaching for. And they're explaining that I can't be joyful because I can't stop this from happening. And we say, it's not your right to stop anything from happening, but it is your right to find alignment with what you desire. And when you do, that's what the universe will yield to you. Isn't it a perfect world when everyone gets to create what they are a vibrational match to? Isn't that perfect? And isn't it even more perfect when you are consciously, deliberately holding your vibrations in order to make sure that you're in sync with all that you've become? And watch in the next few days. Many animals will reveal themselves to you. They'll come forward to express to you their well-being. Jerry and Esther were in the Seaside State Park in Virginia Beach several years ago. And as they went into this, it reminded them it looked like the place where Star Wars must have been filmed, that scene with all of the drooping trees and the aircraft coming up out of the swamp. That's what a good part of this place looked like. And as they walked in, it was silent. Jerry and Esther always found a time when most people weren't there to go places. And so they pretty much had the place to themselves. And as they walked in, it was silent. It was as if no one was there. It was like not a creature on the planet was anywhere near where they were. So they just walked in and were basking and loving and enjoying. And then soon the forest began to come alive as the inhabitants of the forest understood the energy of Jerry and Esther. And suddenly there were creatures everywhere crawling across things and flying by and moving around. It was remarkable to witness such a change in such a short period of time. And then they came to the ranger station. And in the ranger station, there were pictures on the wall. And there was a beautiful picture of a silver fox. And Esther said to the ranger, are we going to see him? And he said, no. Notice the caption. It said, elusive silver gray fox. <laughs> he said, I've been here for 15 years. I have never seen the elusive silver gray fox. So Jerry and Esther wandered down the trail. And there the fox came. And he stood right in the intersection. They were going this way. He came across a trail going this way. And he stopped, moving along, stopped, looked at them, sort of nodded at them just a little bit, back looked at them again and then off he went and jerry said so much for elusive then they came around esther wanted to use the restroom so she went in and came out and now she's waiting for jerry and as she's standing there jerry says esther i want you to just stand still don't do anything abrupt or sudden but i think you're going to enjoy something just look down and as esther looked she was on a wooden walkway and as she looked down the wooden walkway was only six inches off the dirt. There is a copperhead snake all stretched out, sunning himself, enjoying the day. And Esther said, should I be afraid of him? <laughs> Jerry said, no, he is one of the most venomous snakes. <laughs> Jerry said, but he's not interested in you. Just back up, just back up, just back up. So they went back to the ranger station. And Jerry said, we saw the copperhead snake. And the ranger said, we don't have any copperhead snake. And Jerry said, you do now. <laughs> so what we're getting at is, there are vibrational conversations that are happening among all of you. And we want you to know for sure, because we know it for sure, that the conversation that the animals are wanting to present to you is that all is well. Nothing is going wrong. This is as we knew it would be. It is as we perpetuate it to be. All is really well.